Has the production of contemporary music been a motion of a free-thinking society, or has it been subconsciously shaped by a dominating cultural entity? There is an undeniable relationship that binds contemporary music to political constructs. Nested in this relationship is the analytical framework that supports ideas such as style at the ex expense of substance, pseudo-individualization, and standardization. These are prolific theories from the most influential minds of the last century and are crucial to gaining an understanding of how they depict and dictate our culture. Contemporary music is portrayed as a product of capitalism and incorporates such theories. This is an attempt that aims to acknowledge how these theories have weaved themselves into fabric of our culture and society. It is important to unearth the roots of these ideas before we observe how they have maintained a function in our culture. The Frankfurt School of Theorists and Writers in Germany is a school associated with the neo-Marxist interdisciplinary. Theodor Adorno was a member of the school in 1923, developing a Marxist view of the structure of society led him to construct a systematic theory. His theory was built upon the foundations of mass culture and to stimulate social change. Adorno addresses the concept of mass cultural capitalism, which has stagnated with overproduction. His view contains a strong argument that challenges and undermines any recognisable value in popular music. His analysis abstracts the actions that capitalism regulates over social activity and the diversity it creates as a consequence. It is evident from his work that he conserves the theory of capitalistic supremacy centralised in the cultural industry. The culture industry is a metaphorical machine that manufactures forms of culture in an amatosis manner. Culture manifests itself as a commodity. It is produced with the value to exchange hands on a market saturated with prosperous intentions. The commoditization of such culture leads to an amplified increase of consumption in all areas of society and life. In addition, the market is only accelerated by inventing needs. These needs are the offspring of capitalistic convictions as opposed to humanistic ones. For this reason, the needs lie untrue. This results in the culture industry being at the heart of contemporary capitalism and producing untrue needs. In the music industry, record companies are the byproduct of the culture industry. They contribute to mass production by placing music on the market of economy. This is done in the same fashion just as any other falsely demanded commodity by society. This critical approach, claimed by Adorno, suggests that popular music shares no difference to any other mass prod produced product. It is manufactured, packaged and exchanged from an assembly line and put in a shop window just the same way you would purchase a sandwich. As a result of this process, popular music is seen as a generator of profit and it becomes standardised. The standardisation of popular music is an outcome due to the culture industry. There is a specific formula set in the structure of the product, including the duration, categorisation of genre and various parts that make the songs. Within the classification of certain styles and genres, we can also zoom in on the music and see that it is also standardised into substructures. The working components that construct music are now under the microscope and being analysed into detailed parts. These parts can be similar in one piece of music to another that lies in the same genre, just like a mechanical device produced in a factory. We can dissect the parts into one piece of music and interchange them with another piece of music. To fully understand this relationship, it can be assessed by looking at samples of contemporary music. Popular music from the Beatles and the Rolling Stones to Miley Cyrus and One Direction has evolved both in sound and appearance. With the ever-changing styles of music, musicians have to adapt to maintain public support. However, with these changes in both musical genre and attitudes towards creating music, public opinion plays an extremely important role. In the past decade, consumerism towards making music has developed more and more. The increase in access to musical software and the advance of technology has resulted in the decline of sales of music. As the internet expands in possibilities, so does the ease of downloading and sharing music for free. As a result of this, many musicians have focused on creating a certain image precisely aimed towards the desire of the public. The simplest way to look at the development of these artists and how big a change there has been is to evaluate them chronologically and look at its author's opinions. With the rise of the Beatles come the start of pop music as we know it today. There are many reasons for this success, but the predominant one is that they were popular among the public. Well, Matt Kay writes three short sentences that defines his popularity. This shows that part of the reason for the Beatles' popularity was down to the quality of their music, Romanowski and George Warren explain.
What these authors are trying to say is that the Beatles developed their music further throughout their career, which in turn set a standard for other musicians to reach in order to achieve success in pop music. This shows that the standardisation started to take form in the world of pop music. While the quality of the music was an important part of their success, equally was the image that they portrayed.